Joining us is Evercore founder and senior chairman Roger Altman. Good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, we've been trying to assess the economy, where things are. You try to assess confidence, I think, in the boardroom, given a lot of the conversations you have with CEOs. Where are we really? Well, I, what I think is fascinating is how wrong the consensus on big things has been over the past year, starting with inflation, uh, where right. originally, when it surged, the view was this is transitory, it will self-correct. Jay Powell himself espoused that. Then, as it surged further, that view was discarded, and the Fed, of course, embarked on the sharpest mon monetary tightening in 40 years. Now, it looks as though it was transitory just over a somewhat longer period, right. including that the tightening of monetary policy may have had no impact on why inflation has come down. Then, recession, six to nine months ago, at least, well, actually, a majority of CEOs in surveys right. thought we were going to have a recession. Mm -hmm. uh, now, we don't have it. And uh, the most recent data is amazing. And the outlook for 2024 seems to be slower growth, but no recession. And so that's off the table. Right. And then, of course, China, two years ago, three years ago, unstoppable colossus. Now, demographic collapse, state interference, right. excessive I think no you're growth. making an argument for why the public thinks the elites know nothing. Well, arguably, they do know nothing, including me. Uh, I mean, I was wrong on all those things. but I was wrong on a lot of them, too. So, <clears throat> but it's, it's, it's fascinating, and it's humbling, and it's testimony to the unpredictability of this incredibly complicated global macro and financial market environment that we're in. And, uh, you know, is the consensus now for slower, steady growth, right. perfect for the White House, the right consensus, who knows? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. To the extent that you think that, and I don't know, I don't know if you think that, now when you talk about sort of CEO confidence, when you talk to leaders, do you think that they have any better sense of it? I mean, when, when you see people who actually well, make they transactions do, they, and put money to work. Well, they do because they know their own business. Right. So, so what are you hearing on that front? I'm hearing uh, more confidence because the business outlook is better than they thought. Again, most of them thought we were going to be seeing a recession. And now, they, just like everybody else, they don't see that. They're feeling better. They're seeing good earnings. I mean, right. P&G <laughs> earnings, really strong. And they're real bellwether. American Express results, impressive. And so the confidence is up. And generally speaking, when confidence is up, CEOs, or some of them, look externally in terms of thinking of things right. they can do because when confidence is down, right. they focus inward. R Roger, it's nice that the Fed did go up 500 basis points. Even if they didn't cure inflation, we need, we need ammo for next time that there's a slowdown, right? We needed to normalize rates. They've been able to do it without causing even a, a yes. landing of any kind. Yes, and give them credit. I think they deserve credit. So then that's like, almost like gravy. It's not bad that they went up 500. If, I mean, you're not saying they didn't have to no, do that. No, no, not at all. In fact, I think any, well, I don't know about you guys, I certainly would have tried to do the same thing if I were responsible for monetary policy. But you or don't part give them credit for, for harnessing inflation. No, I give them credit for the right response, but I, but I don't think it's clear it at all anyway. yeah. that yes, that, that the tightening of monetary policy is the reason inflation has come down. I don't think it is. Interesting. Well, all of our assumptions are, you know, our sacred cow. How many of them are? I mean, they're sacred, but they aren't necessarily right. Right. And, well, increasingly, they're increasingly they're not right mm -hmm. because of the complexity. And, and, I mean, look, we live in, for example, unbelievable velocity of capital around the world in terms of finance and financial yeah. markets um, and, and, and very unstable geopolitical environment. Right. We thought we had to raise unemployment to harness inflation. And it doesn't look like no. it has anything. To, they're not even 22 straight months of unemployment below 4 percent. I think that hasn't happened in 30 or 40 years. So that was a sacred cow. We got to go up a point and a half. Right? Yeah. And by yeah. the way, that was that point. That's a really good point. That was like. <clears throat> you know, monetary policy 101. On a tablet, the only like way Moses to had that. Yeah. Yes. To get inflation down is to have labor markets loosen and but, unemployment but go up. But that's because people thought, so much of it was the supply chains and, and the and issues from the pandemic that were left well, over. Now, and, that, and that's what you see uh, the CEA, Jared Bernstein, yeah. saying, and I think correctly, that, that so much of this in retrospect was supply chain related, and now it has self-corrected. Are we going to say in retrospect that the energy markets are going to be what keep us in real trouble with inflation down the road, especially if some of these geopolitical concerns continue? 
Becky, I think that depends on where those, how those geopolitical factors play out. I mean, if you step back, and I was look, watching your Granholm interview, um, you know, the American energy sector is it's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing. I mean, we're the world's largest oil producer, and now we're the world's largest LNG exporter. You wouldn't pause, would you? I wouldn't, no. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, and um, I, I'm a big fan of the energy sector. I just think the entrepreneurship, the technology, the level of enterprise is amazing. You know, uh, oh, sorry. And right. <clears throat> oil prices, I think, are so unpredictable because, mm -hmm. you know, if suddenly right. the, the situation in the Red Sea Red gets sea much worse, right. they'll go up, right? right.